I was funded by the Office of Navy Research to understand CNS oxygen toxicity, which manifests itself as a seizure. So to understand fundamentally what's going on in oxygen toxicity, we had to build technologies that allowed us to visualize cells and, and pieces of tissue and even do experiments in whole animals. And as we started getting a whole picture from the cells to the molecule to the physiology, we realized that brain energy metabolism was a critical component, uh, or I'll say preserving brain energy metabolism in the face of the oxidative stress which occurs in oxygen toxicity seizures, which is much higher than what you'd experience with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We realized that uh, anti-seizure approaches needed to target specifically certain pathways in the brain. In looking at the literature, we saw that the ketogenic diet was able to manage seizures when drugs failed. So uh, much of my work has been on the diet, but also developing substances that can mimic the diet. There were studies that were done in, at Harvard in 1967 to show that in a fasted state, when we, in the absence of eating, our body mobilizes and burns up the stored glycogen, and that basically ends up as sugar. And then we start tapping into our fat reserves for energy, but our brain does not efficiently transport the fatty acids across the blood-brain barrier. What we do is that we have accelerated rates of fat oxidation in the liver, and these fatty acids get converted into water-soluble fat molecules that allow it to be readily transported across the blood-brain barrier. So in the absence of food, in the absence of carbohydrates, our brain has a metabolic flexibility to adapt from using glucose to using ketone bodies. Being in a state of either fasting ketosis or nutritional ketosis, which is limiting carbohydrates and elevating fat, dietary fat, the shift in our physiology to the physiological state of ketosis helps us preserve brain energy homeostasis in ways that we're just starting to realize now. So we want to harness that ability and circumvent more or less, the dietary restrictions associated with getting into that physiological state, which take many days to even a week or more to achieve that physiological state. If we can achieve it in 15 to 20 minutes with a synthetic or even a naturally developed compound, that's what we want to do. And that's all, most of our efforts have been towards that. The elevation of stem cells in the blood is not insignificant. It's something that you would see sort of with the drugs like Nupagen or Leukine, which is GCSF or GMCSF. And these are very expensive compounds and they have a lot of side effects. And they're given to patients, you know, after chemo to restore their blood counts. Uh, there are some clinical trials, I think, looking at these compounds in traumatic brain injury. But we know that hyperbaric oxygen can actually elevate stem cells to the same level of these very expensive compounds that have side effects. So the use of hyperbarics in elite athletes is still on the fence as, term, as far as efficacy and the studies still need to be done. Uh, there are quite a few athletes out there at a high level that are interested in this and, uh, and some of them are using it. We know the basic science has shown us that the use of hyperbaric oxygen mobilizes stem cells in the blood and it also causes these stem cells to hone in on sites of injury to assist in repair and maybe decrease inflammation. We've looked at the science and the science is being also continuously explored and on the clinical side the actual art of delivery is part of the exploration and it's not necessarily the insurance companies or the health systems that are looking at this piece of it, it's really the individual person, the person who is seeking out various alternatives or additions to their care process to support the ability to be more optimally